I missed a stream last week, and you can tell how frequently I've been using this palette, or in fact painting at all, by the fact that this, um, this new palette hasn't changed at all since that stream, and neither has this page. Um, a bunch of stuff going on. But I figured, hi Paula, how are you? So today I'm talking about Prussian blue. Um, not what's on screen right now. Uh, I myself a Prussian blue paint. Well, I've got plenty of it kicking around here. How's your past couple weeks been? Didn't have a stream last week. Um, I don't know which chats I posted this in. I accidentally starved my puppy because uh, she was teething and so she didn't want food. She wasn't taking food and so I thought that she wasn't hungry. But actually she was starving. She just was also teething. So, last week was a little hectic, oh. and then I had a bit of a, a prescription situation. So I've been under medicated for a week, um, but I'm got my stuff now. Uh, Anyway, so I haven't really touched this since last stream. Um, I'm actually going to go grab an eraser and make room. One moment. Hello, 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 hello. Sorry, had to go grab an eraser in the other room um, to erase the pencil lines on this thing that I did in the last stream um, while I talk about what I'm doing in this stream. So some of you, some of my regulars watched when I did a, a light fastness test. Now, unfortunately, that test went sideways um, because I chose to, oh, oops do the second half of my test um, up in my attic, which uh, gets really, really hot and then really, really cold and then really, really hot and has wild um, humidity swings. So I had some condensation happen inside the bag, um, which destroyed the, the exposed results. Basically, the results became somewhat worthless because they condensed, they bled, they mildewed, they, there was a lot of other stuff going on, so I couldn't trust that the lighting results were accurate. Uh, yeah, my, my husband ordered a whole bunch of office erasers <laughs> asked if I wanted some and I said no until of course the first time that I wanted to erase something um, and then I knew where to go find an eraser I don't actually use erasers very frequently um, anyway uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Prussian blue while I paint some other stuff with um, while I paint some samples out for this page um, and then I will pull out a different paper to do the um, next bit. 
with the Prussian blue. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about the deal with Prussian blue. I... So it's going for sort of random placement here. I think it may have uh, gone a little too random. And this looks a little weird, but mm -hmm. life. Um, sorry, Prussian blue. Um, Prussian blue was one of my favorite colors. I was really excited to test it for light fastness um, because I had, it was a favorite color that I had cut out of my palette because it has such unreliable light fastness tests. I would spoken to a couple of manufacturers, including Roman Schmal in particular, like the company founder Roman Schmal, um, from Roman Schmal Aquarius, who said that he had tested his own, um, his own brand and that he was confident that it was light fast. And furthermore, gave me some pointers about um, different shades, saying that the greener shades tend to be more light fast than the bluer shades. So the deeper greener shades are more light fast than the um, less intense redder shades of Prussian blue that it comes down to manufacturing and that if it's manufactured properly um, and handled properly, that Prussian blue should be light fast unless it's exposed to other things that it reacts with. And he specifically mentioned zinc white. Um, so I tested a number of different brands. I got my hands on um, over a half dozen different brands. It was about eight, I believe. I tested them alongside a whole bunch of other things. Um, I do have a stream where I showed the five month results of uh, that light fast test. Unfortunately, the one year um, never happened. Uh, and I wish I had scanned them before moving them because then at least I would have a partial um, from winter sun in my studio but uh i didn't and so i moved them to the attic and unfortunately they uh they molded and mildewed and dripped and it was really quite quite a disgusting mess um so i got rid of that test sheet um but Within the first five months, even in winter sun, all of the samples, including the the ones that other artists had tested as light fast, including ones that, um, like the Roman Schmoll sample that he insisted was light fast, everything had faded um, quite noticeably. So there was no question that... Um, Prussian blue was not particularly permanent. I was curious about how it would do with more exposure. Um, my sense is that it was pretty dire. Um, but that being said, I uh, wanted to figure out what was going on with like the the difference where some, some artists 
who have tested Prussian blue themselves seem to actually genuinely get some decent results with their light fastness tests, whereas others don't. Um, and I think this comes back to the same granulation clumpy nonsense thing that I've discussed in my blog posts. And it, what it really comes down to is that there's a reaction going on with my local water. Um, so uh, there are two reasons why my results will tend to be more dramatic than many other artists. Um, uh, so the first one is that I paint on hot press paper, which shows texture and shows um, Uh, minor differences um, a lot more um, and then the other one is that I live in Kitchener Waterloo in uh, in Canada and um, we have uh, the hardest water, so we have a lot of calcium and iron um, dissolved in our groundwater, which is what we use for drinking water, um, and also what I use for paint water. Now, I have um, in the past experimented with using distilled water for painting. I don't think that that's realistic as a, an ongoing thing. I do order distilled water for humidifying purposes, um, but I don't think that it's realistic to expect that, for example, if I'm on the road and I'm sketching, that I'm not going to use regular water. Um, that it's not going to get into my paints. Or that, uh, which um, you can start noticing in what I'm, part of what I'm, why I wanted to do this now is you can start noticing some of the different effects. Um, that you might see, like, um, there tends to be more texture that shows uh, in some of my um, transparent, supposedly non-granulating paints, they tend to show quite a bit of texture, um, particularly in brands that are um, a little bit higher pigment load or have honey in them. Uh, so for example, I don't I don't know exactly how it's listed, but this is genuine indigo PB66. And it is, as you can see, starting to separate, um, which I don't think is really how it's expected to behave. Um, uh, sorry. Anyway, um, where was I? So I think it comes down to my water. Um, that my Prussian blue, if I'm going to paint in my circumstances, um, you know, I am going to be using at least some of the time uh, my local water and my local water is going to react with some pigments. So it's not only light that's reacting. So Prussian blue is an iron um, compound. Sorry, I... Uh, I have completely spaced on what the chemical structure of it is. Um, but it is an iron compound. It can react with um, uh, ionic um, sorry, um, uh, minerals in groundwater. Um, like calcium and like iron, um, which can speed the oxidization reaction 
that uh, causes Prussian blue to discolor. Um, and also the fact that these are, you are adding extra I, um, iron or calcium, you're adding extra ions means that unlike um, in the situation of pure light, you're changing, like, you're changing what's in that mix. So, um, whereas if it's only been discolored by light, it does theoretically come back if you leave it in a dark room. Um, that might not be true if your paint is discoloring from, uh, sorry, that might theoretically, uh, not be true if your paint is discoloring from more than just light. If there's um, like ionic interactions happening in the pink film itself. Sorry, I might have to go rescue my dog. I shut her in the bedroom um, to take a nap and she is going crazy. Uh, I might have to go Pull her out of there before she calms down for a bit and bring her over here. Possibly actually take her outside, although she did just get a walk, so she shouldn't need an outside trip. She should be due for a nap, but you know, sometimes she's difficult. Ember, be quiet, please. I'll come get you in a moment. She let herself into the bedroom. I was actually going to have her in here, um, but she frequently naps in the bedroom. Um, I figured it would be easier if she wasn't right underfoot. Writing for an abstract for a conference, which is due tomorrow, so I'll be listening mostly. Okay, good luck with that abstract. But I have this thing that I don't like to write. Writing has been my weakness, and I've been battered about it. Okay, great. Thanks, Paulo, for um, sharing that. Yes. yes. Okay. 
You want to go to your bed? Good girl. You can see there's like sticks and chew toys all under my bed. Or under my bed, under my desk. Didn't know the great way we use Prussian blue. Some copies I've seen of it are still blue. Um, well, so the Great Wave is painted in what medium? Is it watercolor or is it oil? Because the Prussian blue is much, much more stable in oil. Because it can't react with anything that's in the water or air. It's all encapsulated in oil. Um, washi paper would block printed. Okay, but it might be an oil-based ink. No? Put the wood block printer's new Snikawa. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm not really sure about... Yeah. Okay, Amber. Here, look. Come. No, no, no. That's not for you. Come. Yep. Okay. Amber, off. Off. Off my desk. Off. Good girl. Good girl. Under. Under. Yes. Good girl. Go to your cave. Down. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. You're a good girl. You're my good girl. Yes. Good girl. You take a nap now. It's not time for babies. Okay. Good girl. Yes. Okay. Good girl. She was made with cowhide, but it's water based. Okay. Cool. Um, so sorry, so, uh, oh, okay, so when you say copies, because it's a woodblock print, so there are, you're speaking of, of, like, the, the, the original edition, not, not, like, prints of it. Because prints, I mean, of course, prints don't have any bearing on the original. Um, depending on what it was, what was in the water, what's in the, like, in, what's on that paper, how that, like, it, it can react with a lot of things or not react. Um, it does need light to complete its reaction, like, it needs input energy um so if the originals have been properly stored um in the dark or under uv glass under museum conditions um even a watercolor painting painted with mine water might be relatively stable um to be honest, like, I don't, I have mixed feelings about whether this is the sort of thing worth worrying about. Um, just because if people actually care to preserve your work, they can do it. Um, this isn't like paper that'll fall apart, right? Uh, if if we're talking about light fastness, um, if you hang it appropriately behind UV glass, um, or keep it in a book, uh, where it's not exposed to direct light frequently, um, artwork should last a good long while, and otherwise, I mean, I think it's a little bit presumptuous to assume that people a hundred years from now want my specific original. 
um, you know, I'm, I'm making art for now and what happens after it leaves my care isn't really up to me and I don't expect it to be. Yeah, exactly. So the scream is painted on cardboard. Exactly. So there's a lot of, of good art that's painted with bad non uh, non archival materials and you know that becomes part of the story uh, and you know that's most art doesn't doesn't last forever and that's probably a good thing um, because there will be some artist coming around who wants to create something new um, I don't you know, if other artists want to um, use colors that aren't as light fast, um, that's totally fine. I really, really do love Prussian blue. Um, however, again, it's just because of where I am in, where I'm positioned in the art market. So I am not um, some super famous artist who can sell a, a banana tape to a wall or uh, a self-destructing art piece, uh, nor would I necessarily want to, but, um, sorry, Ember, off, off, please, off my desk, off, yes, go to your cave. What's your cape? Look. What's your cape? Oh, look. Look. Sorry, guys. I have a little puppy to deal with who is very cute but very problem. Yes, very little problem. We love you. Here's your. Oh, and here's your other chew. Yeah, a good chew. And here's yet another chew. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I have a blog post coming out. It is mostly written, but it needs some images. And unfortunately, my light fastness test um, got destroyed. So, um, I'm going to paint some Prussian blue samples for blog images. Um, But uh, where I've come out with this is that, um, I guess my point is uh, your water strongly influences how your paint behaves. If this is something that you care about, um, then you have a choice between either using distilled water to remove that variable and being obsessive about always using distilled water. Um, because as I've found out with my water, if I use regular water once and then I go back and use distilled water the next time um, it's still in my brush it's still in my like there's still stuff left over in my water dish there's still um, like in my paint sample you'll already have um, the sedimented ember are you helping because i don't think you're helpful no off good girl good off go to your cake look go to your cake look do you want to go inside go inside your cake Good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl. 
She has a little cave bed right under my desk. Um, so, she's amusing. Or you are doing some more tests. I'm not. I'm. I think I'm quite done. Um, I am just going to. Uh... Sorry. Yes, I could ask Lana for um, her images, but rather than using her images, I think I will just link directly to her site so that she gets. Um, all the credit. So yeah, so, um, because the, the truth is, Lana also has, again, different water conditions than I do. Um, although, Lana's results are more similar to mine than, for example, Teo's. Um, which actually makes a ton of sense. So when we first saw Teo's results, they didn't seem to make a lot of sense because he was getting less um, fading in Prussian blue and a few other colors than people in areas that get a lot less sun than he does. Um, Teo is in Singapore, so he's very close to the equator. He gets a lot of direct sun. He's got full Florida ceiling windows and a building high up. Um, he should be getting, a, if, if, um, if all fading was due to um, sun exposure was due to light fastness concerns in Prussian blue, you would expect Teo to get some of the most fading. So the fact that he his samples did not seem to fade under exposure that other people's samples did was a bit of a puzzle. Um, and it, it turns out the answer is actually very simple. Singapore has very limited water supply. They are purifying seawater, among other things, um, and waste stream water. Um, so their, their drinking water is basically distilled. Um, so he has some of the cleanest, cleanest water to work with. Um, that has the least other minerals. Um, hey! Uh, than you would find in pretty much anywhere else in the world. So, um, it totally makes sense that Teo's results would, um, would show Prussian blue as very light fast. It also makes sense that people who are trying to control as many variables as possible by, for example, testing with distilled water would um, have better light fastness results. It makes sense that, you know, there are artists who do just paint with distilled water and that they wouldn't have a problem. Um, I'm trying to just uh, throw in some water here to show you a little bit of the other issue that you see with paint. So this one that I'm using is um, a Magello Mission Gold. Um, and then there's just a little problem. Uh, no, that's not for you, buddy. That is not for you. Yeah, need it. Need it. That's not for you. You'll make yourself sick. And this is definitely not for you. Um, so you'll see it like I haven't added salt or anything, but because of the dissolved um, calcium and iron in my water, or in fact some of the dissolved salt, because I think I may have used softened water here. Uh, no, I didn't. I did use just my regular water, but um, some of my water is softened because uh, we have such high 
mineral concentrations in our water supply that um, when you get a water heater, um, locally, usually people rent them from the utility company or the utility provider. Um, so when you get a water heater, um, they require you to install a softener um, locally because uh, the lime scale um, from all the calcium in the water really damages all the piping and the mechanics of the water heater. So whereas they are usually, they usually last 20 years, even with a water softener, locally they um, are expected to only last about seven. Um, and that would be closer to five if we didn't have water softeners. Anyway, so, um, wanted to create some texture in here. Ember, what are you doing? <coughs> yeah, what if I just in some more um, so you can see on this sample maybe hopefully um, can you see how I mean Prussian blue is usually thought of as a transparent non granulating paint um, in under my conditions it is one of those paints that uh, rarely ever is it usually has quite a bit of texture um, Uh, and that's just because um, it is like the pigment in s itself is very, very hydrophobic. Um, so, uh... okay. Sorry, the pigment itself is very, very hydrophobic. So uh, in order for it to be granulating, it needs to always be completely covered with binder. It is very tiny. So it's difficult to get enough binder and mix it well enough that um, they are fully covered and keep them that way. Uh, if the vehicle if the, sorry, if the pigment separates from the vehicle, the pigment separates from the binder um, and is no longer fully encapsulated every particle, then they will tend to clump together to stay away from the water because it's a super, super duper hydrophobic pigment. Um, and so then you get this clumping effect. Um, and I have a blog series about that that I'm sorry, I have a dog eating my plants. Ember, do you want to go to, do you want to go to the bedroom? Do you want to go, where do you want to go? Go to the bed. You need to go outside. Okay guys, um, fun intermission. We're going to go take the dog out. And you're coming with me. Tails results also got me thinking about the nature of Prussian blue is to precipitate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Prussian blue precipitates. Hey, uh, so you're getting a bit of a tiny bit of a house tour. Uh, where is your leash buddy a leash any leash um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a gigantic mess on my table Ta -da. 
so happy. Ever wear your leash? Where's your leash? Buddy, where's your leash? Okay, we're gonna go with a super long leash because that's the first one I found. Haha. -ha. Out we go with a long line. Oh, actually, maybe that's the answer. Okay. All right, Ember, outside. Outside, 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 yes, this way. Okay, let's put your leash on you. Sorry. Sorry for this uh, really great um, filming here. But when puppies have to go, they have to go. All right, out you get. Oh, we have tethered you, sorry. We have tethered her inside. <laughs> So I've got her long line, which is for recall training. Um, Ember, where are you going out on your long line? Excuse me? No. No. Uh-uh. Yeah, peeing in the garden. Good girl. Uh, where do you think you're going? Where do you think you are going, buddy? Where do you think you are going? on your long line. You think just because you have a long line you can just take off? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay. Right? Yep. You gonna come back inside, please? Come on. Doo -doo. I know, you've got quite the long this leash is ridiculous. This leash is ridiculous. Nobody needs 25 feet. Nobody needs 25 feet of leash. Where are we going? This doesn't look like... Sorry. There you go. Hi. Hello. Say hi to the camera, buddy. Yes, okay. You and your long line are coming home. Beep boop. Good girl, yes. Walk the dog, yes. Do me a favor, walk my dog. So she grabs the end of her leash um, and carries it away, walking herself, which we've made into a trick because we make everything into tricks. Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on. This way, this way, Amber. This way. I know you don't want to go inside. You want to stay outside forever. Okay. And back inside. So yeah, that's my little impromptu messages tour. Um, okay, let's take your leash off, and you can go upstairs and take a nap. Go. Bye. Upstairs. Up. Where are you going, bunny? No, Ember. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, let's not show everyone the all the various mess in our house. No. You can come upstairs. Come upstairs. Go upstairs. Come on. Yes, we can take this upstairs. Come on. Upstairs. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Come on. Come Come on. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Into the bedroom. Into the studio. Come on. Yes. All right. Yeah. And then we can move back to Sorry about that. We are back. What's that? Also, hey. Hi. Yeah, she's a happy little girl. Um, very happy. Uh, just happily causing problems a lot of the time. Right, little criminal? Okay. Good girl. Yes, good settle. That's a good girl. That's what you were supposed to be doing all along in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, 
that's the Prussian blue part of this is I'm going to use this uh, sample to discuss some of the properties of water and Prussian blue and etc. But yeah, um, you can see there's like this clumping. It looks like granulation, but not quite. Um, so that is, well, it's granulation, but not quite. It's granulation, but it's like backwards granulation. Um, it's, it's not individual particles settling. It's um, particles reacting with water and clumping together. So it's a slightly different pattern than you will see in most granulation. It occurs primarily in pigments that are described actually as um, transparent and non-granulating. Um, if you have uh, paint where the pigment load is too high, or if you have water where the um, dissolved mineral content is too high. Um, either way, you end up with paint that the pigment that separates from the binder and creates these weird little patterns. Um, I am trying to sort of play that up um, and show as much pigment behavior as I can on this little sheet. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's just my local water. Uh, and Prussian blue. And I will let that dry. Maybe I'll throw in a little bit more of a very dark version of it. Um, and I will let that dry to let it um, Prussian blue is one of those pigments. I mean, what are you doing? Right, of course. It's not for you. Do I need to lock you up? Do I need to lock you up, little criminal? Send you to jail? Buddy. Buddy. Take a nap. your cake? Yes, good girl. Down? Down? What is this? She's still one of my plants. And eat it. Good girl. on my lap. What's going on here? What's going on here? Okay, so that's it for Prussian Blue. Um, I'm writing a blog post that'll come out presumably later today. Um, it is mostly written, but it just needs some links and uh, images, so that'll help. Um, and I will let that dry and then see what it looks like after it's dry. And hopefully there are some interesting patterns in there that I can use. Hi. Hello, buddy. <laughs> Ember. Uh-huh. Down. Sit. Good. Settle. Good girl. Settle. Yes. Good settle. Good. Settle. Good. Good girl. OK. 
Okay. Um, jets. Yeah. Um, okay, so then the next part of this is it is fall, which means that all the leaves are changing colors. And they're always so interesting. This week something really weird happened. Oh, I want to hear about something really weird that happened. Also, Pablo, I just I had a yuzu tree briefly, and then it died, much like yours. I drew four things. Wow! That's awesome. That is more things than I've drawn. Um, anyway, so I got a whole bunch of maple leaves. A lot of these are silver maples. There's some field maples and other maples in there, too. Um, but what I find fascinating about autumn leaves is just all the different ways that they change colors, like the, the, if you take a look at like these two, um, one of them has, the veining is this pink color, and the um, background is more yellow, and then this one has veining that stays yellow, um, and then more of the orangey pinky color showing through elsewhere. Um, some of them have like really, really detailed patterns on them. Um, yeah, I painted leaves every day for a year. Um, and people ask me if I got tired of leaves and the answer is no, I got tired of that challenge and the way it was set up. But uh not like leaves are still fascinating and if anything it was like the seasons changed too quickly and then i would see something that was interesting not have time to do it one day and then you know there's uh leaves constantly change so especially spring and fall you know you, you have these short short windows of where things Oh, I got to know you. That rough texture kind of looks like something, some kind of animal skin texture. Uh, sorry, which one? The... This one? Those daily drawings. Yeah, um, I would definitely encourage people to do like a month-long, um, daily art challenge. The, the year-long thing is, I mean, I wouldn't say I regret it, but uh, that's a little much. Anyway, um, that being said, I figured uh, I have a Friday stream that I don't really have a plan for other than paint a uh, Prussian blue square and also some some color samples um, so I could get some leaves in and do some just some rough leaf sketches um, start playing with these a little bit um, see how that goes um, my dog is now seems to be mostly asleep um, so I'm going to start out with Zoom this right back out and move this over. Make a big mess. Um, move this over. Make a big mess this way. Okay. Oh. Hey, buddy. Good girl. I'm sorry. I'm making too much noise there. She's moved out from under me to behind, like under my desk to just behind me. Um, so, so I'm going to move to over here, so you can see this, I guess, and, um, start playing with some of these leaves. Uh, 
and I don't like I don't have the time to do any of these justice, uh, much less all of them. But uh, I did just want to play around a little bit with some of these leaves. Um, so, uh, in the interest of expediency. I'll share one thing that I did. I want it to be really quick about my leaf paintings while doing the daily leaf was I would definitely hold the leaf down. Um, now this is a flat look, like it would be much more interesting to have it on an angle or something. Um, But, uh, can't always get what you want. Um, sorry. So, so just marking out some of the points and then from there you take the veins. out where those veins are. Um, I usually don't do much in the way of pre-sketching. A um, little bit. Um, but in this case, what I find interesting is that there's these hot pink leaves, or these hot pink veins. I don't know if they're really showing as much. Um, on here, but they are like opera. And since I have some opera pink from this uh, this last little experiment out, um, I figured I would do those. Sorry, I. Anyway, so this leaf, um, I do really want to play with that opera and see if I can just get something um, that looks sort of right. Um, uh, with opera pink and the other colors that I have in here. Um, so that's what I want to do with this leaf. I have a whole bunch of leaves. I have them in a, um, I've been keeping them, I collected them on my walk with Ember just before the stream, and then I've been keeping them in a little plastic bag with a wet paper towel, um, and that just keeps them from shriveling up and losing their color while I'm here chatting. Um, anyway, so I have two examples of this where there's that uh, really neat, like, opera veining, and so I want to play with that and see what I can do to replicate that effect, um, to really show that, that opera color. Um, I think that that's going to be an interesting shot. Anyway, um, 
So that's that. I'm going to rinse all the various stuff out of here. So then I'm going to start out by painting in, in clear, slightly bluish water because my water is slightly bluish. And this is a sketch book and I don't care. Um, Painting in all of this area, just wetting it, and then I'll come in with the aqua on the main rib and these side veins. And you'll see I'll have to do sections at a time. Um, but first I'll do that. I'll be able to did that not is that not wet enough? Like wet that? Okay. A little more blue than I really had hoped for. And let's take that. I'm just gonna make it more. What kind of tool am I using to sketch with right now? This is a 0.3 pencil. Sorry. It's 0.3 mechanical pencil. With B lead in it, I think. Might be HB. Um, I tend to not like putting too much graphite down, um, so I sketch very minimally, um, just enough to sort of guide and do most of my drawing then with my brush. Um, And paints, uh, but can't, can't do everything with the paints. Um, and in particular, I wanted to get down where my veining was going to go rather than trying to sort it out on the fly because I already have to worry about how fast it's drying um, to get this wash to work properly. So um, in between, I'm going to throw in some, I'm going to do the edging with some of this. Uh, so uh, for those of you who weren't here a couple weeks ago when I did this side of the page, um, this was like just an oddball bunch of paints that I had that were fairly bright that seemed like they would be fun to mix together. Um, so there's no like real rhyme or logic to the paints that I'm using right now. I was just experimenting um, on this new ceramic palette that uh, eventually I will fill with... Um, I have a plan for filling it, but I... I had not gotten to that. It was just
Joy. Yeah, sorry. So um, I'm, I tend to not be terribly fussy about uh, my drawing tools um, in as much as I do have a preference. I like, um, like I will draw with any pencil, um, but I don't like keeping track of pencil sharpeners. Um, so because unless I'm working in graphite, so if I'm working in graphite, then yes, I like um, real pencils rather than mechanical or at least drafting pencils because um, then I can, you know, apply more, more good stuff at a time. Um, but... Uh, Usually, I don't worry too, too much about what I'm drawing with. Uh, whatever I have at hand is fine um, in as much as I have a preference because I'm not, don't put a lot of effort into having a very exact drawing. I prefer for my drawing tools to be very light um, and small because um, it's not really a part of the finished product that I want to be showing necessarily. Um, so I use mechanical pencils. I use really teeny tiny mechanical pencils because I'm messy. And if I have a bigger mechanical pencil, I will draw too hard and smudge the lines everywhere. Um, and that just saves me that trouble. Um, But uh, for a sketchbook or something like this, I, to be honest, it's just whatever was there. I just tend to have a lot of teeny tiny pencils because I like Okay, and while we're doing that, I'm going to take one of these other ones, like this super complicated looking thing. Um, and there's no way that I can get all of this in, but I can presumably get some of it. So you'll see, again, I am just trying to get some of my details in. Um, it's not really tracing uh, because in this case, for example, I, the leaf is somewhat bent, um, but I'm just getting out all the edges um, because again, this is sketch and I want to get the basic shape in as quickly as I can because I'm not going to have a whole bunch of time to work on this as it is. Um, and I would, would rather spend it on more interesting stuff than trying to figure out weird geometry of leaves. Um, if, I'm, if I'm just painting them flat like this, um, so nothing against, uh, using some cheat tools here. Um, so in this case, I'm going to get maybe a slightly more detailed drawing in, um, because I'm not going to color in all of it. 
only going to color in some sections. I'm going to get out my little circle template. I'm going to draw a circle um, and I'm only going to paint in those sections. So then I don't have to paint the whole thing, but I am getting an impression of those leaves, if that makes sense. My goodness I'm actually putting an eraser down to pencil marks so this is something that I don't usually do usually I um, try to sketch in pen if I'm going to be sketching much at all um, I just use pencil to basically guide my initial uh, paint marks so that I'm you know I have some idea of where the lines to not paint outside of are um, uh, and then I'll just erase afterwards. Um, so there will be all sorts of sketchy lines. Um, but I really got, uh, I was looking at it wrong, from the wrong angle, and got the This, the shape of this vein just completely off um, and so I am actually using an eraser so there we go sometimes I use erasers bye Ragnar thanks for stopping in um, I believe that Paolo left a link to my Discord channel, uh, my Discord server, sorry. Um, a whole bunch of us hang around there during the week and chat. I have not been super present because my last couple of weeks have been a bit crazy. Um, but I'll be there now and uh, we, it's like, it's like this live stream only throughout the week. Also, if anyone watching um, is not a patron but wants to be, I have a Patreon exclusive stream coming out on Sunday. Um, so Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, so that's the same time that this stream started only on Sunday. Um, this Sunday is Halloween. I'm having a Halloween special stream um, and what I'm doing for my Halloween special is I'll be um, talking about how to paint uh, like flat patterns on curved surfaces. So how to project a, if you're painting, say, a face that's on a pumpkin, how to, how to adjust from, you know, the flat image to um, to that face, to, to the, to the 3D shape, as well as, um, interactions of, like, complex, um, shadows that you'll get from, three D objects. So um, I'll be using pumpkins as my pumpkins, jack o' lanterns as my uh, reference subject. Um, doing a little bit more of a structured stream than I usually do on Fridays here. 
Um, so on Fridays, I just turn on my camera to whatever happens to be going on in my life, um, like checking out my dog. Uh, on Sundays, uh, or at the last Sunday of every month is what it's supposed to be. I have a Patreon stream. Um, hopefully I'll be getting a little bit better about keeping up with those obligations. But in any case, I do have one this week. Yellow kiwi or people color kiwi. Oh, um, in other news, I am planning on getting back. So, uh, eh, most of you probably know I have a um, home studio and a co-op studio that I work out of. Um, and I've been working from home throughout the pandemic, uh, which is, you know, great that I have that available to me, but not so great because I'm not nearly as productive here. Um, and also, I desperately miss my regular workspace. Um, so I've decided that I'm going back. Um, of course, I went and got myself a dog, so I'm going to have to bring my dog. Uh, luckily, my coworkers are lovely and understanding. And I've said it is fine if I bring my dog. Um, I am hoping to train her up as a service dog, but she's just a little puppy right now. Um, and if you saw her running around outside, she's not providing any services to anyone. She's just a puppy. Um, at this point. Couldn't find words in the right order, though. <laughs> you know, if you, Paula, if you want to beat up someone about it, um, I'm supposed to put these things in the video description every week. And um, for all that I was like super proud of myself that I set up my video early today instead of, you know, at the very last minute as I'm trying to set up my stream, like, oh yeah, I should maybe have a link for people to go to. Um, despite all that, despite the fact that I was on top of things, relatively speaking, I still, um, 
didn't uh, prep at all. And so there's nothing in the video description right now. It's just... I'm just depending on I have nice mods who will go and find my stuff for me. Which I do. Y'all are awesome. But, uh, but you know, I could have easily solved this problem by just doing my job correctly. <laughs> you should have, like, a document on your computer that you can quickly copy and paste. Yes, I should. I should also, like, uh, be able to tab switch without losing track of where I am, who I am, what time it is, what I should be doing right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Notice Sennelier is on sale. Uh, yeah. Not the biggest Sennelier fan, but uh, for those who are, that's that's awesome. I also have so many paints. Like, paints don't last me a lifetime.
Today is on sale where at Jackson's? See, this is why I don't do um, uh, palettes by brand very much because then then there's this whole like, oh, I want to fill up this palette. I want to, you know, I need to get more paints to fill up this palette. And then you end up getting a lot of the same um, paints from different brands unless you are, you know, very happy switching between different pigments. Um, so instead, I just shop by pigment. Um, which is not to say that I don't have like doubles, triplicates, more of some of my favorite pigments that I've tried from a bunch of different brands, but um, mostly they sit in tubes until I pour them into a palette to use. And I find that a little bit easier than um, trying to keep track of everything. So to do this properly, you know, I'd, I'd have to do a lot more dry brushing to get all of these details in. Um, but I'm just trying to get the general pattern here. Like I thought it was really, really cool that this leaf had these um, like hot pink veins against some more muted yellowy orangey colors in the rest of the leaf. So I wanted to do that. Maybe I'll take some notes, make this into a bit of a Nature Journal page. I just glance at my non-essential mail. I'm not buying any more art supplies until I start more actively painting. That's a great plan. Yes, I need to use this, use the supplies I have. But anyway, yeah, so um, my plan with uh, moving back to the studio is I'm just going to, um, I'm trying to set up a somewhat more reliable routine with my dog um, so that she naps at specific times and then I can walk her um, to the art studio, um, arriving around 2.33, um, about the same sort of time that I took her for a walk today, um, and put her in the crate there. Um, so she's not much for crates, but uh, she will sit in a crate these days when she's very tired. Um, she will eventually fall asleep in there. And so we're going to just work a little bit more on crate training um, just for sleep. Like I'm, I'm going to be right there, um, but just, uh, you know, so that my studio mates don't need to be concerned about puppy proofing. Um, so she'll just be napping in her crate right beside me. Um, and hopefully I can get 
two to three hours in while she takes her afternoon nap. Um, most days, especially if I make sure that she's nice and tired. Um, actually, this is interesting. How many people here are dog people? So the reason why I ask is, um, Ember is a, a mixed breed, a border collie and Malamute Canadian Inuit dog. Um, I specifically chose her because I wanted a very active breed. No, but I was a little bit scared uh, heading into it that, like, I don't, you know, my experience with dogs was my family had raised seeing eye dogs when I was very young and then had a Maltese puppy, but that was Black Labs and a Maltese. And so I was a little bit concerned that, uh, you know, my, am I like vastly misunderstanding this? Um, I've heard so many horror stories about um, dogs being restless, under exercise, they get destructive, etc. I still hear about that. And people seem very surprised um, when they meet my dog that she calms down pretty well um and it's hard for me to tell because i do exercise her i guess a fair bit but it doesn't seem to me like i'm doing anything that unusual like people around me take their dogs all kinds of dogs labs etc for walks often it seems like they're taking them for more longer walks than i do my dog um she gets a fair bit of mental exercise from training as well, but um, again, I like my impression thus far, now she's four months old, so obviously she has all sorts of puppy energy and what her actual energy level will be is bound to change. But it strikes me that like all of the, you know, oh, well, she's getting into things problems that I have, like what you heard earlier today, aren't really an energy level problem at all. They're just, uh, well, she's a puppy. Um, so I was wondering like from other people who have dogs, uh, am I just off about like, do I just have very different expectations of how much I'm going to be walking my dog. I take her out, so for reference, I take her out. Um, I mean, she needs to go pee all the time, but most of those are like just stepping out like how you saw me do earlier. Uh, I take her out for proper walks, like two to three times a day. So usually um, she'll get a proper walk two times a day, like one, one longer one um, for an hour or so, uh, one shorter one, and then usually um, some kind of outside playtime at some point as well. Um, so totally maybe a couple hours um, I mean, we have a whole bunch of extra outings right now because she's a puppy, but they're not, they're not for exercise, right? She's not, she's not doing anything outside other than peeing. Um, so in terms of like how frequently I actually get her outside, um, couple hours, most of that is like brisk walking, um, with some training along the way.
Anyway, yeah. Um, it makes me wonder though. Like, am I just? Do I just have like higher expectations? It just it seems to me like most people around me also walk their dogs twice a day. Um, and it's not like I'm taking really long walks every single day. Um, some days they're shorter. Usually one is at least a half hour, but um, I try to aim for an hour, but you know, if I can't, or if it's really yucky outside, I'll just do longer training or, um, you know, condense it by having her chase a frisbee for a while. Um, I thought that this was fairly normal. Like I thought that people do just walk their dogs, you know, before work, after work. Um, is that not a thing? Uh, Cause like, I guess the point is like, you know, I don't get the feeling like she's particularly insane or stir crazy more destructive than other puppies she's a puppy i mean she's destructive all puppies are um but i don't feel like it's you know excess energy necessarily she seems to have a yeah so i'm just wondering like if am i just providing her with an unusual amount of exercise or do I have like a unusually calm border collie malignant? It's like, what's going on? Uh, Cause I'm not in other people's heads. Um, do people just not walk their dogs as much as I think they do? You're awesome with them, right? Attribute her good behavior entirely to an attentive owner. Ah, uh -huh, thanks, Mom. I mean, I do put a lot of effort into training her. I just, um, yeah, I was a little bit scared of, uh, Just like, what am I getting myself into with such an active breed? And it, it's been like oddly, it's been a lot less of an issue, like a lot less of a factor than I expected it to be. And it's interesting because every time I walk her and she'll, you know, sit to greet other dogs or, um, you know, be, she's, she's, pretty calm you know if we're talking to someone she'll settle down um and i mean i tell people the truth which is well yeah but you know you're seeing that after she got some exercise like she's not she's not always like that um but at the same time it seems like well yeah but isn't that the case for most puppies? I don't know. I just brag about my sweet puppy. <laughs> I don't mean it as just bragging though. Genuinely curious. I'm curious also because a lot of people walk dogs and mostly ignore them. Oh, so you're saying that like a, a walk where you are training for a half hour is different than a walk where you're just completely ignoring the dog and letting it tug in every which way. Same distance, but 
Amber's also independently awesome. I brag, it's for you too. She's a good little puppy, but I, I, like, I'm, I guess my question is, like, well, okay, so for future dogs, like, I kind of just blundered into this with, like, yeah, I want an active breed, um, because I, like, I want the dog to need exercise more than I do, um, to get me up, um, but I did have some, like, serious concerns about that, um, because that can easily backfire, right? That's why people recommend against it. Um, and so then I wonder with Ember, like, is she just calmer than other, is she just calmer than other Border Collies? Like she has a lot of Border Collie behavior. She seems to me like she could certainly, you know, if you're playing with her, yeah, she, she could keep going all day. Um, mm -hmm. But she also sleeps like 20 plus hours a day if left to her. You know, if you don't exercise her, she does get crazy. If you don't exercise her at all. So when there's, when it's a really nasty rainy day, you can definitely see the difference if I'm cutting walks short that she's just, she acts up more at home. Um, she's definitely a better dog if she gets more physical and mental stimulation. Um, and I definitely do, like, I know that I put a lot more effort into training on walks and off walks than, um, most dog owners. So that might be the, like the entire difference, but I would just, I would be hesitant to, you know, okay, so what if, what if it's just Ember and the next time I go, I'm like, this is great. I'm going to get a border collie and then I'm just blown away because, uh, you know, Ember is not represented. <laughs> She may be calmer than other border collie if the border collies actively want to be directed to do things and you do energies into appropriate goals. If you didn't, she would be figuring out her own challenges, like how to chew off the table leg or break through the screen door. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right, so I didn't really know Border Collies either, right? Um, or, I guess I had somewhat more exposure to sled dogs, but not that much more. Um, I'm very glad that she does not have the that much of the uh, sled dog stubborn streak or running away. Like, she doesn't run away, she just... She She's stubborn, but it's manageable. Um, but yeah, for sure, if I wasn't on top of her all the time. She would be figuring out how to chew off my table legs. Um, uh, but you know, as she is getting older, um, like she has an off switch and she does, you know, increasingly just let me 
and do my thing. Um, I don't have to be paying attention to her all the time, and she does just, even when she's not asleep, lounge and chew her toys and only climb on my table a little bit. <laughs> not be a good border collie owner you are well i was surprised that you only take your dog out twice a day <laughs> like that seems crazy to me <laughs> but i can't hold my pee in that long Why do you feel like you wouldn't be a good Border Collie owner? I'm not arguing, necessarily, I just... Compliment and tell me that I'm doing right. <laughs> I don't know, like I didn't feel like I was, you know, that uh, people talked about like, oh, you know, you need to be a very active person. I don't know that I'm like the most active person. I mean, like now I am, I have to take a, take a dog out all the time, but, um, but even then, you know, like, okay, so I take a walk a couple times a day, not even a long walk, just like around the block. Um, you know, I mean a little longer than that, but So there's one leaf. You know, there's people who go for a run every morning, and I've never been one to go for a run every morning. Um, I'd go for a swim if it was available, but it's not. So, like, lead a pretty sedentary life. Um, I'm not hike going out on hikes every weekend or. Don't own sheep.
ready? Are you awake? Hey. I like you, baby. <laughs> Big yawn. Hi, Ember. Hi, hey, buddy. Look at those big ears. Heads up. We want you to be quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet, please. Amber, please. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, 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 no. Amber says very loud hi. Um. Okay, no, that's quite nice of you. This clean enough out of you. What's going on now? You want water? Okay, let me get you some water. Sorry, my little bog wolf is... Thirsty again. Let's get you some water. I'll get her some water. I'll be right back. All right. Was that it? You just needed water? You know, you can do things, you can communicate and raise their lesson, right? That's all right. We need sheep for Ember. I need alpaca for Ember. We looked at a property in... We looked at a property. We browse properties when we're... bored or frustrated. Uh, there's a there's a hobby farm for sale and so it's Laurentius. Um, 60 acres. So it's got like horse barns and stuff. For my alpaca farm, Joy, and hey, look, I've already got a herding dog. So, you know, perfect. Okay, I need to pay attention to a puppy for a moment. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna move this up a little and move these out of the way since it is a disaster when she gets her little teeth into paint tubes. Hey, buddy. Hey, good girl. Oh, good girl. You want to sit on my lap, little girl? Yes. Yes. Good girl. You want to sit on my lap? You're a good girl. Okay, let's go sit on my lap. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, you're so snuggly. You're not snuggly at all. You're not really good at snuggles. No. Also, you're huge. When did you get so huge? Oh, my goodness. You are huge. Remember this tiny little baby that I used to have? Look at this gigantic animal. Look at the giant animal. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy.
I know. Studio assistant. So helpful. Oof. So helpful. Such help. Are you helping? Are you helping? Are you helpful? Yeah? Good girl. Good kisses. Kisses. Yes, good kisses. Good girl. Good kisses. Do you want to go back to your cave? Do you want to go to your cave? also like to point out this has been out for just a few no just a little while um and i did originally trace where all these different parts were but you'll see that it's already shrunk um it makes drawing awfully interesting um okay so i drew the basic shape of this and now I'm going to grab a circle template and I'm just going to do a little section of it because there's no way I could get all of this detail in and do it justice so I'm just gonna choose a choose a piece Shredding a box. Good girl. So I'm just going to do that section there. And so I'm going to start out with, I'm going to use the same palette of really crazy bright colors. Um,
being is super cuddly. Ember likes to think she's a cuddly creature, but she's really, really not. It's really too bad because it would be really awesome if she was super cuddly, but she's, she's not. <laughs> okay, I am going to make this a little bit easier on myself and I'm going to use the, this red brown. Um, so I'm adding a color here because, um, so I've got, I need to mix a more muted sort of red. So I've got this hot opera and I'm just going to mix it with this more brownish tone to get something of a, of a deeper red over here. And then I'm going to mix the opera with this orange over here to get that more orangey tone. And I'm going to switch out for a really teeny tiny brush and get some of these details in. So, oh, no, not that one. Um, And I also want to take some of that and get me some ember. No, what are you chasing around the floor? What is that? What you got? What do you have? Is that Ember's toy? Is it something else? What you got? Did you steal my pencil? You stole my pencil? You little thief. You little criminal. Hi. How about you chew Ember's toy? No. You make trouble. You make trouble. Only trouble. All trouble all the time. You haven't gotten enough sleep, buddy. No. Are you going to let me sleep in tomorrow? Is that what's happening? Okay, I may have to cut this short soon. I'm Ember's getting a little cuckoo, shall we say? Um, and um, I might need to go take her out for another walk, or take her out. Well, at least to pee, and then she probably wants food. Ember, no, off, off. Off the table. Off. Ember. Off. Okay. Off. Good off. Good girl. Good girl. Ember. I have a dog chasing my art supplies, so I think I'm actually going to cut this short now. Uh, I may try to get back to painting this on my own time, um, but I need to deal with the dog who's currently chewing on a pencil. So I will...
So thank you for joining me. Bye bye um, for those of you who are going to be around um, on Sunday. Uh, if you're a patron uh, or if you'd like to be a patron, I have a Patreon exclusive stream on Sunday, same time Halloween special. We're talking about painting pumpkins. Bye bye.